Hey, we're back at it with day nine. Well, it is not currently as of filming. It is not Mother's Day. This video is gonna go up on Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the mommies and all the mother figures and all the mothers out there. You're doing great. I'm sure right now you definitely need a Mother's Day to... You know what I'm saying? Let's get into the jar. Abby, it's one of yours again. A Niffler, a Niffler, a Niffler. It's a creature from Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. And they are so adorable and I'm so excited. Let's do it. Okay, so a Niffler is like this dark colored platypus thing and its features are like a peachy. I'm gonna do that neutral ivory color as a background for real this time instead of what I almost did for the background of Bailey Marie. So section nine is this guy. All right, let's get some colors together. All right. I've got my mystery brush, because I don't know what brush it is, into just that ivory color right here. Paint this. So we're painting a Niffler. Let me just give you a little background on what the heck a Niffler is. A Niffler is, like I said, it's this little, little platypus looking do, except it collects shiny things. So a huge thing in the movies is that the Niffler just can't stop stealing stuff. I've got pictures on my screen here. They look so funny. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything. Not really spoiling anything. It's, it's like one of the first scenes in the movie the niffler breaks into a jewelry shop and tries to blend in with the like jewelry bust stands it's got necklaces and bracelets all over its limbs and it's just like trying really hard to blend in it didn't work okay i am going to sketch out the shape and i haven't done this yet but i think i'm actually going to use a pencil and sketch out the shape of the niffler Let's do it. So if you can see, this is kind of the shape I'm going for. And he's gonna be facing that side of the canvas. So he's sort of like smuggling stuff away from the other pictures in the painting. We got a whole concept for this one, y'all. We got a whole thing. I'm gonna make him slightly off center. So there is that. Comes down like this. Got like a little, a little tail. Uh-huh. And then feet with some sharp toenail. Comes back up. He's gripping a, a pocket watch. Yeah, I could get down with a pocket watch. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Here. You can see like this part is that sort of peachy nude color. And then this is all all black for the most part, or like a dark blue almost. But his feetses and his handses and his faces. What? I need to isolate that, like really separate it. I need to distinguish it from the rest of the color of his body. Yeah. Etc. Etc. Nose. Nostril, nostril, yada, yada, yada. Cool. Sketch is done. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite colors of paint that I have with a name that baffles me to this day. This is, um, this is a color called Payne's Gray. What color does this look like to you? Because to me, I see a color that is ever so slightly lighter than like my black paint. Let me show you what it looks like when it comes out of the tube. I'm sorry, but does that look gray to you? That one right there? No, it's like a dark blue. <laughs> Who is pain and why are we naming a color after them? God. Whatever, it's Niffler color in my book. I'm just gonna fill in all of everything that doesn't have that sort of fleshy color. We're filling it in. Sorry for the camera angle change. Just. It just did. I was getting some real nice like bonus highlight, like mixing with this background color, like inadvertently. Like I did not do that on purpose and I'm not mad about it. Ugh. I'm a professional. Almost there. Filling it on. Y'all don't need to watch me fill this thing in. If I do a jump cut, it'll be like, now. Did it work? Look, it's a Niffler. <laughs> I think it's time to make the color of his schnoz and his footsies. I'm gonna use a little more of that ivory. I'm gonna add a dash of pink. We're gonna see what we get. Again, man, I did not think I'd get this much use out of this color. <laughs> so I've got the glob of ivory and a little dash of pink. Let's see what happens. Mix, 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 mix. Sort of a pinky tone. Let's see what that looks like. Perfect. And this is just the base. We'll go in with some details and some shading, but we want to give it that foundation color and make sure all the pencil lines are covered up. You know, we don't want any of that. <laughs> cool. Cool. And we got his hands as is. Although these are pretty much in shadow. We'll mess with that. I just want the general idea of where they are. General idea. A niche joke. And then his footsies. 
those sharp toenails. There we go. Oh no, oh no. Uh, you can't see what happened. Let me bring you in. Look at that. Uh, it's okay, I can cover it up, right? Covered it up. I think that that little moment was uh, a very telling time that uh, it is, uh, it's, uh, you know. Hair is up. We got white in here. So many things have changed. So for the fur texture of the Niffler, we are going to take some white and I'm going to take the Payne's Gray and put it into the white instead of the other way around because I want to save the Payne's Gray in case I need to do some detailed touch-ups for later, but I want a lighter color but not white for this fur texture highlightness. So let's try it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, Sniffler highlight. Do I want to start with the top of the head, the body, or the tail? Top of the head. That's getting the most light, so I can be a little bit more heavy-handed with a lighter color. It doesn't have to be as subtle. And really, I'm just, I'm pressing and flicking. You know what I'm saying? I'm just making the lightest, the lightest little flick. Okay, I'm gonna go back in and layer in some of the actual true Payne's Gray, just cause looking at the picture, it like blends into the lighter thing. Like the blue, the Payne's Gray sort of fades into the highlight bit. Yeah, there it is. Okay, let's do some furs here. Uh -huh. We need to go a little bit darker. Just a, just a skosh. This brush still might not be fine enough. Should I use my edging brush again? I'm gonna use this for some bigger stuff and the edging brush for detailing where the furs really are. Because if this is modeled off of a platypus, which, how can it not be? Platypuses, platypi, platypoison. Actually, I think they do have poisonous secretions. So platypoison is kind of fun. <laughs> because they're, they, they swim, they have like a protective layer of oil to help insulate them from the cold water. I know that that's the case with otters. So I would, I would just bet that that is why the fur looks oily. It looks greasy. So I can afford to make these strokes a little bit bigger. I don't have to be as defined with the fur. We do have to sort of shape out where his arm actually is. There's his knee. This is a funny looking creature. He's got like a little bit of a belly tail. Gets a little extra something. Okay, I'm getting distracted by other parts. Yeah, he's starting to develop like an actual shape. How nice is that? Paint on my thumb. Whole new meaning to the term green thumb. <laughs> that paint was blue. I'm gonna bring you in. Just like, do you wanna see this close of my face? Oh, we got in real close, you know? This ain't bad. You can see it a little bit better. He's really starting to look like a niffler. I'm a niffler. Stealing all your jewelry. Feeling cute and screwy. Acting. Stupid. So sue me. <laughs> so sue me. I'm a niffler. <laughs> New TikTok challenge. The niffler. Oh, I'm mad at myself too, don't worry. I think we need the edging tool. Mm -hmm. So flat. I'm gonna take the true pink gray and go in and sort of define the furs just a little here and there oh that was a lot more than i expected it's okay i can clean up that edge andrea you're not doing what you wanted to do gotta make sure when you do this if you're going for the flat edge you really have to flatten it out before you use the brush if you're hearing crunching, Ray is eating some broccoli stems. She loves them very much. In fact, frequently, if I'm eating anything with any sort of vegetables, mm, scratch that. If I'm eating anything, she will hop up onto the couch or hop up to me if she can't hop up onto whatever it is that I'm sitting on and nudge me until I feed her. She'll literally just like sniffing, 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 being cute, trying to get food from me. I'm like, um, honey, it's not safe for you to have all the things that I have sometimes. Sometimes I am eating human things. That sort of sounds like I'm eating parts of humans. That's not what I meant. I meant I'm eating food meant for humans and not for bunnies. Good save, Andrea. All right, and since I have this with me, I'm gonna make like the little furs that are like the profile is giving it that texture. Like he's not perfectly round on the side. You can see some of the furs coming off, raised from his body. I'm just tapping the flat side of the brush and sort of pulling it 
in to give it that like furrier moment. And I'm trying not to make them too evenly spaced because who has an evenly spaced niffler? Nobody. Oh, this is making such a huge difference. I'm just changing the angle as the angle of the, of the niffler himself changes because even though he doesn't exist, physics still applies to him. You know, it's gonna stick out a little bit. Wow, that did a lot. Oh my gosh, it is amazing what one little change will do to a painting because that that did everything for me. <laughs> we'll do a little on his knee and a little bit on this leg. Cool. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going in with a slightly lighter one and giving some more definition to the tail. Okay, just a little more texture on that knee and then I think we can get into the details of his hands and face. Just a little bit more. Time for the face! For the facial features, I'm thinking I'm just gonna draw the eyeballs and the nostrils just so I know where they are, and I'm just gonna use black for that. In fact, I'm gonna see if there's any black hiding underneath this dried cover. Nope. <laughs> but I really don't need a lot, so I might just go directly into the tube with brush zero. I'm gonna get like a little bit from this little bit in the lid, and I'm gonna make some eyeballs. That might be too, oh, that's a lot. Well, we're gonna be covering that up and making it smaller. <laughs> Brush zero, you're letting me down a little. Okay, and then nostril and nostril. So to get the shading on the bill, I think I need to add a little bit of yellow to my peachy color that made up this face. So I've got my yellow. And I've got Artist Loft Necessities brush two. Kind of another flatter brush. So I wanna give it that smooth feel. Nice and smooth on the face. And I'm gonna dip a little bit, little bit of yellow and mix it into the peachy color. Yeah, that works. And I'm just gonna, yeah, there we go. And it sort of comes down. Sure. <laughs> what if I had some white? Like, what if I did that? Yeah, give me that layered look. What's up? Now his nose snout area gets very pink. So I need more pink. Who am I? So I'm making a much pinker version of the fleshy color. I'm just gonna make this part a little bit pinker. Cool. Okay, now we need just some, some white highlight action. A little nostril area like that. Cool. I need to make his eyelids now, which is almost a browner version of this fleshy color. So let's see what happens when I do that. Is there any brown under here? No brown under here, but we got plenty of brown right here. <laughs> Don't need a lot. I'm gonna take a scoop of my little peachy pink, lightest dip into the brown, and I've still got a super thin brush. Let's make some eyeballs. Eyelids. Well, both, kind of. He looks like he's falling asleep. I'm gonna blend it with that other color that I had there. So now I need to really carve out where the lid and the actual socket is. So I'm gonna take my flat, flat, flat brush, really flatten it out, and go straight into the brown. Like, just brown, brown. Not, not light brown in your brown. Great. Again, with the paper towel roll. She stopped. Clearly not for long. Yeah, sure. It just looks tired. Oh no, let's let's go back into the like peachy color. Try and clean that up a little. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. His eye needs to be brighter. We need black again. So I'm gonna stick with this brush and I got a little, 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 little bit of black. I'm gonna try and round out that eye bowl. So much better. Because now I have this black paint on this very thin brush and I kind of want to do his mouth line. Wish me luck. Look, hey, like that. There's like so many fine details in his bill that I want to do and I don't know if I can. Like, I don't know if it is physically possible with the materials that I have to do them, but I want to, oh, I want to try. Oh, it's gonna be dangerous. Wash off your brush. Cause he's got like this, this texture to his bill cause it is a bill. So it has that almost fingernail-y texture to it. Uh, I'm going in, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm attempting. We'll see what happens. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, I'm really scared. What's helping is that my brush is still a little bit wet. So the paint that's going on there is very, very thin. And I am not mad about it because it is making a very, very very lovely addition to this. Oh my god, it's working. <laughs> breathe, Andrea, breathe. I don't want it. You should. Okay. Nailed it. <laughs> oh man. See, I want to I want to keep I want to keep butting with it and I shouldn't, but I want to. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. And the most important part of the eye of an eyeball, which of course you know. Boop. <laughs> you can't even see it, but you will. Oh, you will. Now I gotta do the feet. I think I'm gonna put a shadow on the floor, like on the ground, but I wanna I wanna outline where his actual feet and toes are first. And now he has webbed feet because platypus. Oh, feet are so difficult. There's that little guy, his littlest piggy. Sure. <laughs> For the shading here, I am gonna add black straight into the like 
peachy pink. And let's attempt to shade some feet. Oh, this is funky looking. It's okay, we have highlights to add later. Yeah, a shadow underneath the whole creature is gonna make this look a lot better, I think. Because right now, this looks like nothing. <laughs> This part's difficult, y'all. Should have done brown, because this is just looking purple. Yeah, we're changing it up. There we go. Yeah, it's so much better. So much more, like, appropriate coloring, for sure. For sure. Huh. Okay, I also gave him huge feet. I just looked burnt. <laughs> I'm gonna go back in with the background color. I'm gonna go uh, original stepsister from Cinderella and cut off part of the toe. You know that's a thing, right? That the original Cinderella, the stepsisters were so desperate to fit into the glass slipper that one of them cut off their toes and the other cut off her heel. I don't know how I would have done with that when I first watched Cinderella as a small child. Before I really get into like the hands and the clock, which also has hands. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm gonna do the shadow. And my brush is a little, still a little wet. And you just sort of brush it on. And I like to use sideways strokes, which I frequently use for water and for skies. I think it just, it suits what it is quite nicely. If you don't want it to be so true black, it's gonna be lighter because you're not using as much paint. If like the color that's shining through doesn't make sense, Make yourself like a, a almost dark gray. I might do that. I don't know what it is, but that made a difference, at least to me. Right, look how, oh, that, yeah, that just did, that just did so much. <laughs> These feet are really weird looking. <laughs> Let's make a clock. I'm just gonna grab some, some white. Go make the, the rim. And the rim of this is silver. Yeah, it's got a silver chain, so gray, cool. And now it has some hands on its face, as most clocks are wont to do. So let's just go straight into the black, cool, and just tap in some hands. Watch hands, yay. I don't know how I'm supposed to do the little Roman numerals that are on the clock face. So I'm gonna just do some dots and hope for the best. Sure. I don't wanna put jewels on him. Nope, I really don't. I like him. I like him. I think we're done. Yay! Look, there's two of them. That's day eight. Ooh. Okay, let me bring you in. Here's our little nifter. Here's our guy. <gasps> Aren't they cute? Thanks, Abby. Ah! Well, that's day nine, y'all. That's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Be sure to hit like. Be sure to hit subscribe. Share it with your friends. I've got 21 more of these to go. I have been having a ton of fun. I hope you have too. And I will see you tomorrow.